In this video, we develop an approach to the differential diagnosis of anemia. In other videos, we review the red cell life cycle, emphasizing the maturation from erythroblast to reticulocyte, the 120-day lifespan in the circulation, the removal of old red cells by macrophages in the reticuloendothelial system, and the catabolism of heme to bilirubin. We learned that there are only two basic pathophysiologies of anemia, either premature destruction of red cells, bleeding or hemolysis, or decreased production, either a kidney problem or a marrow problem. In this video, we will put it all together and develop an elementary algorithm for developing a differential diagnosis for anemia. Start by looking at the patient. Are they bleeding, jaundiced? Check the reticulocyte count and the mean cell volume, MCV. If the reticulocyte count is high, the underlying cause of the anemia is increased destruction. There are only two possibilities here, either hemolysis or bleeding. The distinction is usually easy to make. The hemolyzing patient is jaundiced, has high bilirubin, and perhaps bilirubin gallstones. The LDH is elevated, haptoglobin low, and there may be abnormal red cell morphology. The bleeding patient will often have an obvious bleeding source, although there are common places for bleeding to hide, like the GI tract. If the reticulocyte count is low or normal, there is a production problem. The next step is to look at the MCV. The low MCV, microcytic anemias, all have a problem with hemoglobin production, either because of an iron problem or a globin problem. On the iron front, this is usually iron deficiency, either from poor dietary iron intake or depletion of iron stores by chronic bleeding. Less commonly, the problem is poor iron utilization, associated with chronic inflammation or a rare group of disorders called sideroblastic anemia. On the globin side, we're dealing with the various thalassemia syndromes, genetic disorders of globin production. When you see a patient with anemia, low reticulocyte count, and low MCV, think iron deficiency, iron deficiency, iron deficiency. In many parts of the world, thalassemias are also extremely common. Lower down on your list would be the anemia of chronic inflammation or sideroblastic anemia. If the MCV is high, the anemia is called macrocytic. Macrocytic anemias come in two flavors, megaloblastic and non-megaloblastic. The megaloblastic anemias are easy to deal with. You recognize them by the macroovalocytes and hypersegmented polymorphonuclear granulocytes in the peripheral blood, and an obvious problem with nuclear maturation in the bone marrow. The cytoplasmic and nuclear maturation processes are not synchronized, and you end up with very immature, large, open nuclei in cells with mature hemoglobin-containing cytoplasm. These megaloblastic anemias are most often caused by folate or B12 deficiency. The non-megaloblastic macrocytic anemias are seen in some patients with aplastic or hypoplastic marrows. The normocytic anemias can be difficult to sort out and often require examination of the bone marrow. One clue might be the presence of teardrop red cells and immature marrow precursors in the peripheral blood, the so-called myelothysic anemias. That ominous sign would take you right to examination of the bone marrow to look for stuff that shouldn't be there, like metastatic tumor cells, fibrosis, granulomas, storage cells, or as in this illustration, leukemic blast cells. A key step in evaluating a low reticulocyte normocytic anemia is to check the BUN and creatinine to determine if the cause is renal failure. If not, the problem might be the anemia of chronic inflammation or hypoplastic or aplastic anemia. Now let's use this algorithm in a few cases. A five-year-old boy is noted by his new pediatrician to be mildly icteric. Mom says he's got his father's coloring. His lab results show that he is anemic, low hemoglobin and hematocrit. His reticulocyte count is high. This puts him in the category of anemia of increased destruction, which is either hemolysis or bleeding. Looking at the hemolysis characteristics, we find that our patient is icteric, jaundiced, 
and his labs show increased LDH and decreased haptoglobin. He has a hemolytic anemia. If you look at his peripheral smear, you find abnormal red cell morphology, spherocytes. As you will learn, a child with spherocytic hemolytic anemia and positive family history is likely to have hereditary spherocytosis, just like this boy. In this case, a 65-year-old woman presents with fatigue, weight loss, and night sweats, an ominous set of symptoms. Her test results show an anemia with a low reticulocyte count, putting her in the decreased production side of the equation. The MCV is normal. This means that it's not a simple case of microcytic anemia like iron deficiency. It's also not a macrocytic anemia, either megaloblastic as with folate or B12 deficiency, or a non-megaloblastic macrocytic anemia as in some hypoplasia or aplasias. She falls into the category of normocytic production defects. Most commonly, this would be non-myelothysic, either renal failure or the anemia of chronic inflammation. In this case, the peripheral smear showed teardrop and nucleated red cells, characteristic of myelothysic anemia. The good news is that this turned out to be a treatable disease, tuberculosis, with granulomas visible in the marrow. An apparently healthy 45-year-old man comes in for a routine exam. His results show a low hemoglobin in hematocrit and a low reticulocyte count, a decreased production anemia. His MCV is low, a microcytic anemia. Since he has been generally well and not previously anemic, the most likely diagnosis is iron deficiency. In this case, it is caused by a previously undiagnosed colon cancer that's been bleeding a little for a long time. His smear shows the relatively large area of central pallor in his small red cells. In this last case, a worn-out woman with two children under age three drags herself in for her first prenatal visit well into her first trimester. Her hemoglobin and hematocrit and reticulocyte count are low, so she has a decreased production anemia. Her MCV is high, putting her into the macrocytic category. Her peripheral smear shows classic hypersegmented polys, a megaloblastic anemia. In this case, pregnancy-related folate deficiency has caught up with her. This session covered a lot of material. If it went too fast, you might want to take a few minutes and review some of the background videos. Click on these boxes if you want to review basic anemia, pathophysiology, the normal red cell life cycle, the anemia of increased red cell destruction, the anemia of decreased red cell production, basic tests used to evaluate anemia, or bilirubin metabolism made simple.